So for this example, we're going to use an airline delay data set. So this data set sources from an Oracle database with a live data access. So there is no caching of data and new SQL queries are directly sent to the database every time a report is refreshed. And this data set is in a database because it's pretty large. It has a lot of columns about different attributes on reasons for delay and it has many rows. So let's open it and start querying it. And let's start with a number of rows. So we're going to take the flight number, set it to an attribute rule of count and then use flight number. I'm just double clicking on it and we see we have about 6.3 million rows in this data set. So a classic need we could have is to do a count distinct of some attributes like pilot ID for instance. So let's set it up to count distinct and let's create a new viz with the pilot ID aggregation, create best visualization and this goes on for quite longer. And the reason for this is that we're doing a count distinct on a large data set, 271,000. So let's see what was the SQL that Oracle Analytics has sent to the database behind the scenes here. So I'm going to console and their session and query cache and there I can see the log of all the sessions. So I'm going to sort this descending and here is your query. So if I click on view log, I see the query at the top and if I scroll down at the bottom, I can see that the SQL was sent to the database. It was a count distinct and I can also see that it took about 5.7 seconds to return all of this. So my database is not very powerful, that's why it took so long. However, I know that Oracle Database has a way to approximate count distinct that is a lot faster than exact count distinct. And the SQL command for this is called approx count distinct. So let me try it on a SQL developer, which is directly connected to our database. Obviously, this is for the demo. It's not necessary if you're using DV. And here's the result. And it came back in 0.7 seconds, and it's a very close number. So that's very interesting. Now let's see how we could invoke approximate count distinct directly from DV. It's actually very simple. All I have to do is to create a new calculation in there, my calculation. I'm going to call this approx count and I'm going to use the evaluate function. Within single quotes, I will just copy and paste exactly the syntax of the database function and I will call percent one because I have one parameter to this function which I want to make dynamic. And that parameter is the pilot ID column. So all I have to do is type pilot ID, select the column, and that's it. The function is ready. So if I validate this, it's validated. I'll save it. Now I can create a viz specifically with my approx count new calculation. So let me pick a table, for instance, and it returns a lot faster. Here's the approximate count distinct number. Now let's check the log in the same way that we did earlier on. If I click on view log, I can see at the top the evaluate formula we just launched. And at the bottom, the physical SQL shows that it function ship approximate count distinct, exactly like it should have. I can see also that the uh, it returned one row and response time was about three seconds, a lot faster than before. So now, what if I want to break this down by some attribute? Well, let's say for instance, day of week. When I bring this into the visualization, it errors out. And the reason for this is that we're using plain and simple evaluate function, which works for attributes. There is a version of the function for aggregations and it's called evaluate aggregate. So let me create a new calculation here. I'm going to use the existing calculation right there. So I just didn't have to recopy everything. And I will use evaluate aggregate AGGR. So this validates and let me just replace the broken column in the table view with the new aggregated column that we created. So this is going on and here we go. We can even add a total for the report. So show total and this is all count distinct, right? So this is all going down to the database and here's the same number. So it came back quite quickly and the full work for the calculation was correctly shipped down to the database. Nothing happened in the OA server here. So evaluate and evaluate aggregate work not only for Oracle database, but for any data source you have behind the scenes, as long as you know the exact syntax of the SQL you want to function ship. Once the custom calculation is created, it interacts like any other object completely transparently within Oracle DV. So let's make this be a scatter plot and let's drag another metric into it. And the query will function ship properly, asking to the database for the right SQL. Let's add another dimension here, like carrier, and this also functions ship properly and breaks it down properly. Now let's bring distance group as a color into this picture and the SQL here returns pretty fast. 
Now let's use a filter for instance. Let's filter out, right click, remove selected this value and the filter works just as well. As you can see, the top and the bottom report return fast and pilot ID at the top still computes a little longer because it's a real count this thing. Evaluate and evaluate aggregate not only work from analysis, they can also be used from data flows. So I'm going to create a data flow using the flight delays uh, data set and I will try to calculate the bin of arrival delay. So for this, I'm going to do it without evaluate first. So I'm going to use the bin function that comes with OAC. So bin arrival delay into 10 bins, but uh, this validates the syntax is correct. But as I apply it, in this case, my data set is too large. It has more than 6 million rows and I hit an error. And if I look at the error detail in the log, I will see that in this case, I am trying to retrieve too many rows. Max row limit exceeded. I have 6.3 million rows and to compute the bin, the server is trying to retrieve all that grain. So instead, I have to use an evaluate function for this. So there is a syntax in the database, it's called width bucket, that also calculates bins. So I can use evaluate with the width bucket function. It has four parameters, so I'm going to have one percent one, two, three, four, and I will give each parameter a value. So the column here is arrival delay. We want to bin arrival delay. The minimum value, let's say minus 100 minutes, the maximum value 1400 minutes, and the number of bin equals to 10. Let's validate this, it validates, and let's hit apply. So the data flow pre-computes a sample of the data and it works. I can see the arrival delay bin being calculated in the database. So I'm going to save this as a new data set. So I'll call it bin flights. This is going to create a data set both in DV and a table in the database. So I'm going to select database connection as the target and the connection that I'm using in my demo here is 12214. So we're done. All I have to do is save it and run it. So if I run the data flow, this is going to go on for about 90 seconds in my case. This all depends on the database behind the scenes. And the data flow is run. If I now go to my data sets, I will see a new data set. I should see a new data set called bin flights. Yes, right there. So let's click it and do a quick analysis to check out the results. So among the columns, I should see arrival delay bin. So if I select this with a uh, number of flights, for instance, create best visualization. Here is my bin number of flights. Obviously, most of the flights have little delay. So let me actually filter out some, exclude some bins like number zero and value null. These are results of the computation by the database. This is better looking. And let's give it a, um, a logarithmic uh, scale, which is nicer to look at and we can go on by adding more metrics and uh, dimensions to the analysis this is just an extra column to a data set at this point so again evaluate it helps you push down to the database complex calculations so you can address larger data set or more sophisticated analytics directly from the oracle analytics server interface it can help directly consume spatial functions or machine learning functions from any database or text analytics function it's very powerful Thanks for watching this video.